Welcome to the News 8 Update in High Definition. I'm Jonathan Betts. Certainly the pride of Rice is its schools, especially this new one, opened just nine weeks ago, now in ruin. We do have a lot more information about why police have locked off a good chunk of downtown Dallas. They're big, they're bold, and popping up all over downtown Dallas. I know it's complicated, but the concept is actually kind of simple. Buried in this rat's nest of equipment is a crystal. And the scientists simply wait for tiny, invisible particles of dark matter to hit it. Wow, Never it has Sarita Agnew's bad. faith been so shaken. After learning her home was burglarized, not by a random criminal, but by police say her trusted pastor. And on Christmas Eve of all times. I'm still having a hard time. I, I don't know what it was about. While Agnew was visiting her daughter, police say a neighbor spotted Sandy McGriff breaking a window and climbing into the home. Arriving officers caught the 52-year-old preacher, they say, loading her car with Agnew's furs and purses. And then they claim she resisted arrest. It's not like she needed them. She didn't need them. She, she, has, she has fabulous things. McGriff has been preaching for years. She's part of a well-known spiritual family in South Dallas and recently began holding services in a small chapel in the back of her husband's furniture store. My biggest mistake was going through, um, going through the window. Christmas Eve, McGriff says she was checking on Agnew and caught two men breaking in. She says she climbed through the window so she could protect Agnew's things. And why did you go through the window? Because I couldn't find the key. Why go inside the house? Why not just call the police? My mistake. I should have. McGriff has a lengthy criminal past and goes by several aliases. Police booked her under Kathy Robinson, a name she admits is fake. Everyone has a past. I am a giver, not a taker. I'm not a burglar. She says she takes pain medication, but insists she's been clean since the late 80s. It's one of my favorite cousins. As for Agnew, she has her belongings back, but now worries about what else has been lost. And, I, and I, I made a decision not to let it shake my faith. Meanwhile, McGriff insists she'll fight the burglary and resisting arrest charges. She says her faith remains strong. She even held Sunday services this morning, just hours after being released from jail. It was a devastating blow. A Pinkston High football player paralyzed during a game. His life and his family's life forever changed. His mother now struggling to cope with a home that was suddenly unlivable. Today, teammates and strangers united to help Jared on his journey to a better life. As teenagers spent the day digging in the dirt. Have a nice day, man. Thank you so much. Okay. For Arlena Williams, they're planting seeds for a better future for her son. Then for them to come together and do this is just, it's amazing. A bad tackle during a high school football game last year paralyzed Jared Williams from the waist down and everything in their life had to change, including their home. So Williams' classmates launched a campaign called Project 24, named for his jersey number, and raised money, enough to build a new wheelchair-accessible house in West Dallas. He has room, he can move around, he can, um, <clears throat> he can go in the kitchen, it's actually, the cabinets are low enough for him to even wash dishes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> With the home's inside nearly complete, this weekend, they focused on the outside. Many of the kids don't even know Jared or even attend his school. We're on a different team, but we're all still team players. We're all still team players that come together as a group. A feeling that began with Jared himself. Grateful they play for different schools, but can still have the same goal. They're not doing it because they have to. They're doing it because their heart is in the right place. They believe someday that I'll be well again and We'll all be at her playing in the yard. Volunteers hope to have the house ready for them in time for Christmas. This is one standard deviation. Another way that standard deviation is sometimes referred to as sigma. SMU professor Jody Cooley. And the rest here is, is just algebra. Tries to teach how the universe works. This formula here actually looks pretty simple. We define the moment of inertia. Force times D where D was the lever arm. Are there any, any questions? Still, it's a subject even she doesn't fully understand. And if people say it can't be done, <laughs> I've always said, really, are you sure? I'm going to go do it. <laughs> Twice a year, Cooley embarks on a journey she hopes will take her to the farthest reaches of the universe.
by way of Sudan, Minnesota, a four-hour drive north of Minneapolis, and tiny towns forged a century ago by people working underground. It's those old iron mines that now draw the country's top mines here. We're on the cutting edge. You know, we're trying things that nobody else is trying to do. Her day starts before the sun does. This is my ride to work. The same ride with the same equipment the original miners took in the 1920s. It's a bone rattling three minute drop in complete darkness. Two thousand feet underground. It's a striking case of old meets new. The most sophisticated technology known to man, all housed in a mine dug in the late 1800s. Down here, Cooley is part of a team of scientists sharing a sophisticated laboratory with bats, where for years they've been searching for something most of us have never even heard of, dark matter. Truth is, it's simply a tiny particle. You can't see or touch it, but it's all around us. This is it. This is the experiment. Extremely complicated experiments I won't bore you with. Convinced physicists dark matter does exist. They just cannot see it yet. And so they don't understand basic big questions like why the galaxies are held together or even how the universe was formed after the Big Bang. It would be like we flip the switch on in a dark room. Ah, it would be great. We understand. We understand. And if they succeed down here, half a mile below ground, not only are Nobel Prizes at stake, it would revolutionize how we understand the universe. They're serious competition. Teams of scientists and minds all over the world hope to discover dark matter first. The hunt at times consumes Cooley and her colleagues. In theory, scientists could spot the particle anywhere, but they need the deep mind to shield their delicate equipment. I know it's complicated, but the concept is actually kind of simple. Buried in this rat's nest of equipment is a crystal. And the scientists simply wait for tiny, invisible particles of dark matter to hit it. And to prove dark matter, they need just five hits. After two years of searching, they've gotten two agonizingly close. I think it is quite feasible we're going to find dark matter in the next five years. Like we're going to say it's here. So for now, the race is on for Cooley and her colleagues to find that light at the end of the tunnel. In Sudan, Minnesota, Jonathan Betts, Channel 8 News. And this is my classroom. Sharon Mitchell was far away when the storm passed, but it could not have hit closer to home. I don't see the pictures. The sixth grade teacher peeks for signs of hope inside her ruined classroom. Her daughter also attends school here. You have to go there every day, and it just comes the second home, and to see something happen to your second home just breaks your heart. Rice Intermediate School suffered a direct hit from the EF2 tornado. We just the kids the new school. People taking shelter at the nearby high school watched it form overhead. We are in a tornado. And cell phone video from the highway captured it ripping through the athletic fields before peeling apart the school. Especially heartbreaking, this campus opened just nine weeks ago. They worked so hard, and the kids are so proud of it. Now that pride is in ruins. Walls are punched in, the roof is missing. The gym, now an open air court. I wonder how many of the computers are run. But among the devastation, Sharon Mitchell still has many blessings. I'm thankful that we weren't here. I'm very thankful that God would save this. Certainly a lot of damage here in Rice. You can see there is debris pretty much everywhere you look, especially around the schools here. Authorities tell us they expect to begin the cleanup tomorrow. Certainly they fear the devastation would have been a lot worse if this school had been full of students and likely a strong reason why not a single life was lost here. Pete, back to you.